Hello everyone. Uh, I'm putting this quick video together to describe how to add textures to your terrain. Now this is in response to a viewer question that I got. Um, if you don't know, I have created an add-on for Blender that uh, assists in making terrains. And uh, the one you see in front of you actually I created with that add-on. But this, uh, this tutorial is not specific to that add-on. However you come up with your terrain, this technique should work for you. So. Let's say that you uh, have your starting mesh, however you happen to get it, and uh, this is it. Now the first thing you want to do is make sure the UVs are good. So uh, if we go into edit mode, we can sort of see the UVs. And the way these are laid out, I'm going to press 7. So let me enable these screencast keys. I should have done that before I even started. But uh, anyway, here we go. Uh, you can see this is all nicely laid out in a grid network with nothing overlapping at all. Uh, this won't always be the case. Uh, with terrains, you generally want to have no overlaps. So if you had, let's say, for example, something like this, and you had an overhang like that, this isn't going to work because you want the uh, terrain to be completely visible view when viewed from the top down. So let's just undo that, and let's click on the uh, UV editing tab just to make sure that our UVs are fine. So you can see, uh, by default, when I created the grid, everything was already laid out in square, but if your UVs aren't laid out in square like that, like let's say uh, they're sort of off to the side like that and you want to put them uh, back in the right place, what you want to do is come over to this tab press 7 to uh, go into top-down mode and then press U to uh, unwrap and you want to project from view with bounds and that is going to snap everything in your terrain to this useful one by one square and you can just inspect that to make sure these are all nice straight lines okay so that's the UV portion uh, moving on to the uh, shading or to the texturing what we're going to do next is come over to the shading tab and we are going to create um, well the, the material that we're going to use for our landscape here. Bring that down a bit. So we're going to click on there and uh, down here we're going to click on new to create a new material and we can name this something. Let's call this uh, terrain. And by default, we have our default shader and our output. What we're going to do now is add a texture. It's going to come down here to texture, uh, image texture. And let's open that up. And uh, you can see I have some uh, textures I painted here. Let's start off with the stony ground. This could be sort of a nice base texture. And uh, what we're going to do is plug that so we're going to, in order to keep things simple, let's uh, get rid of this default shader and we're going to add in a diffuse BDSF. And this is just a simplified shader that doesn't worry about specular lighting and uh, alpha and uh, lots of other weird things. So there you have it, uh, a regular terrain or a texture just applied to that one by one square of uh, our terrain. Now you can see right now this looks way too big. So let's add some uh, UV controls to this. We're going to start with the input, uh, UV map. And because our uh, mesh only has one UV map, we don't have to put anything in here. But if you really wanted to, you could select that. Or if you happen to have more than one UV set on your mesh, you could pick the appropriate one. And then uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to want to uh, change that from the default. So if we uh, were to plug that right in, you're going to see that doesn't change anything, but uh, once we put a transform in there, we can uh, stretch this a bit. So next we're going to go down to, uh, is it vector? I think it's vector and mapping. Yeah, that's the right one. Going to put that in the middle here, and let's zoom in a little bit. Now what we're going to do is change the scale. So I'm going to click and drag up so that we select all three parts of the scale. Then I'm going to drag a little bit to the left, and you can see that is changing the scale. Actually, we want to go the other way and shrink this down. 
until that looks about right. So for our terrain, we just want to uh, change the scale until this looks about right for a stony ground. And that might still be a little bit large. Yeah, let's uh, change the scale a little bit more. So let's say 30-ish is about right. And you can play around with this later. Now, that's one texture on our terrain, but of course we want more than one texture. So how do we do that? Well, what we're gonna do is we're going to duplicate the uh, this node here by pressing uh, Control D. And now we're going to load a different texture into here. So let's load in the grass. And let's give ourselves a little bit more space down here. And we're going to create a, another one of these diffuse. So I just pressed uh, Control uh, Shift D again to duplicate that. Now what we're going to want to do is mix these together. So I'm going to press Shift A to um, bring up the mix shader. There it is. That we can use to combine these two together. So here comes our stone and here comes our grass and now we're going to pipe the output from that into surface now you can see that first of all the grass is way too big now let's move that down a little bit and it's sort of 50 50 with the stone so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this mapping and plug that into here so it's the same scale although uh, you could create a completely separate UV map and UV mapping for your grass texture if you want it to be a different size. But uh, because these two are approximately the same size, we're just going to use the same UVs for both of them. Anyhow, the next thing we want to do is we don't want this to be sort of like this mixture of stone and grass sort of overlapping each other. And there we go. Uh, my yeah, this is an annoying thing about Blender. Once you zoom in too close, the zoom stops working. Here we go. So the next thing we can do is create a mask. So I'm going to create one more image texture. So let's going to press Shift D to duplicate that. Uh, now what we're going to do is press X to clear that. So this image texture now has no data in it. And what we're going to do is create a new ma mask texture by clicking on new and we have to decide what size our mask is going to be. Um, the default is probably pretty good. Let's call this a uh, grass mask. Although you can make it larger or smaller if you want. And uh, I'm going to click OK. Now what we're going to do is we're going to plug the uh, uh, color output from grass mask into the zoom in over here to the factor of mix shader. This is going to tell you how much uh, when we mix them together is going to come from the stone and how much is going to come from the grass. So any area that is black in our grass mask is going to be coming from the stone and any area which is white is going to be coming from the grass. So by default this is going to start off as all black so you can see we just uh, jumped back into stone mode there. But what we're going to do is click on that uh, for um, so that uh, Blender knows that this is the uh, texture that we're painting into. And we're going to click on Texture Paint. And let's make sure this is all set up. I like to, whoops, I like to turn off specular lighting because I find that gets in the way a little bit. And let's also turn off that grid floor because that makes it a little bit hard to see things. But now we're in texture paint mode and our uh, color is white. So if we draw on this, or we paint on this, we're going to see that white showing up. And if we uh, look back at our shader, you can see the areas that we painted white now have grass coming through, uh, courtesy of our mix shader. So let's jump back into texture paint and I'm going to click on the viewport shading so that rather than seeing the mask itself, we are seeing the combined output of everything. And now we can just paint the areas where we would like to see the grass. And this could take a while. 
but you're sort of getting the general idea here. Let's sort of make the highlands grassy and the lowlands not grassy. You just can sort of go on just painting grass wherever you would like it. And I'm not going to spend too long on this, but I think you get the general idea. So that is how you would blend in between two different ones. Now the reason why we're doing this and not just painting into every, uh, just creating a single large texture and painting on it is that this saves a lot of space. Now if you look at the um, original textures, first of all, our, um, the mask itself is only 1000 by 1000 or 1024 by 1024. If we look at our grass, uh, let's actually let's uh, go over QB editing. That might be a little bit clearer. Uh, so that's the grass mask there. If you look at the grass texture itself, that's only 256 by 256, and the stone same thing, 256 by. Or actually, no, this is 512 by 512, and same for the grass. And uh, if you were to Realistically, do this entire thing as a single texture, you'd be looking at many megapixels in order to get this same kind of resolution. By uh, combining the masks with these small repeating textures, you can get the effect of a lot of change without actually uh, investing uh, in a, a huge texture. Now, for some cases, you might want a huge single texture, but for something like a game or something where you're just sort of blocking in a scene, uh, this sort of masking technique can save you a lot of uh, rendering time and a lot of memory space. Okay, so this is fine if you only have uh, two textures, but what if you want three? What if we want to add a third type of uh, terrain in here? Well, what we can do is come back to the shading tab and basically do what we did here, but do it all over again. So we're going to select these three nodes so that's the image node, the diffuse node, and the mix. You can press Shift D to duplicate that. Gonna come down to the image node. We're going to open up our uh, dirt right there. And we're going to want to get those UVs coming in too, so it's the same scale. Now we're gonna want to mix the mix. So instead of our grass and uh, stone result going to the output, we're going to put that on the input here. And this guy is going to be the new output. And now we're going to create a second mask that mixes between our top two and our third one down here. So let's duplicate that. This is going to be our uh, dirt mask. So let's delete that to get rid of the old image. New. Let's call this one dirt mask. And uh, and you saw that was uh, 1000 by 1000 again. Again, you can make that mask whatever size you find useful. And okay, yeah. This guy is going to be the input factor here. So by default, that's all black, but when we want to paint our dirt here, so see that I modeled a little bit of a path here. Let's put uh, dirt on our dirt path by going back to texture paint mode there. Pressing F to shrink that down a little bit. And now we can just paint along there. And that's gonna be a little path that our uh, people in our movie or game can walk along. We zoom in and see that third texture on top of everything. Whoops. Are we? Okay, there we go. So there you have uh, three mixing together. So that's the basic idea. And if you want even more texture than, textures than that, just go back into your shading tab, uh, do this whole thing again with uh, an extra mix node, an extra mask node, an extra source texture node, and an extra, uh, what's that one again? Diffuse node, or whatever kind of shader you want. 
and uh, you can reuse the UVs uh, in all of these like I was doing here or you could come up with uh, brand new UVs for uh, each one uh, but uh, that that's it in a nutshell let's come back to the layout note here and yeah there you have it so I hope you found that useful and uh, happy texturing your terrains goodbye for now